Are you feeling the calling to start or grow a business that is so aligned with you and everything that makes up who you are? Do you know that there has to be a way to do this without so much hustle and without chasing the latest shiny object, but you're just not sure how? You can definitely have a dream business that improves, not consumes your life, that allows you to work with soulmate clients while helping you and your family financially and in all ways. You can elevate yourself to be the entrepreneur who has all of her desires. I'm going to show you how on the Elevated Femmes Movement. Hi, welcome to another episode of the Elevated Femmes Movement. Today, I have Sarah, and I'm so tempted to pronounce your name the Italian way, but I think you just say it, Ina, Ina Cohn? Ina Cohn, yeah. Ina Cohn. It's, I'm like, Ina Cohn. Like the American version <laughs> of, I know, <laughs> that's the right way to say it, I think, but... <laughs> I practiced for a long time, Sarah. I so. love it. <laughs> no, <I'm> <laughs> <laughs> I'll respond to either, to be honest. <laughs> so I have Sarah here with me. She is uh, an amazing copywriter, and she's become a friend. We been we were in a in a coaching container together, and we're going to talk about how she's been building this great business that she, she that she's been running, and how she does it her way, how she makes it work for her lifestyle. Um, but Sarah, before we get into all that, tell us a little bit more about your background story and how you got started with your online business. Yeah, definitely. So I think the core of everything for me is travel. It always comes back to travel for me. That's sort of my biggest passion in life. So when I was in high school trying to figure out what I wanted to do with my life, travel was just sort of like, you know, how do I make this into a career? So I ended up going to school for tourism and hospitality management, which Looking back, I don't know it was the greatest decision. Uh However, it led me to a path down, you know, hotels, events, all of that kind of stuff. So after about 10 years of switching jobs, like almost every year, you know, there were a couple that lasted two years, but I was definitely a chronic job hopper, which was not not good at the time. Now I feel like it's Mm -hmm. become a little bit more acceptable. But um, the one time I went to go quit another job and my mom's like Sarah like can you really not stay like another like six months like just <sighs> try and I was like nope not having it so I I just couldn't really find my thing I couldn't figure out what I wanted to do I couldn't figure out what I enjoyed and finally I ended up in a job as the event planner slash marketer for a manufacturing company and I traveled for work I was able to go you know I planned a luxury meeting in Mexico which like to be honest, sounds like the coolest job in the world. But when I actually got into it, I was like, man, this is still, it's just not for me. Like it was long hours, the commute was long. And I loved my team. I loved the thought of what I was doing. But at the end of the day, I was burnt out. I had anxiety. It was just not going well. So I took a good hard look and I was like, this is probably the best nine to five that I'm possibly going to have. Like I have a great salary. I get to travel. I love my team. I actually take my lunch breaks, which is something that like a lot of people didn't do. So (laughs) I was like, what is the real problem here? And I sort of realized that I just wanted more freedom than a nine to five would ever give me. And that's when I, I met up with a friend in Spain and he had left his corporate job in hotels to, um, work as a contractor for an events company. So they sourced hotels for meetings and events across the world. So I was like, you know, that's my favorite part of my job now. So let me try it. So I did that in July, 2019. I did it for a good, you know, six, nine months before the pandemic happened. And then during the pandemic, I was like, well, selling meeting and events right now on a commission basis really is not going to go super well. So I had to sort of reevaluate again at that point. And it was, it was very stressful in the middle of the pandemic with all these things happening. I was like, well, what skills do I have? Because the only thing that I knew at that point was that I did not want to go back and work for somebody else. I had sort of had a little taste of that freedom that I could have. And I knew that I wasn't willing to give that up. So the underlying factor of all of those events jobs and hotels jobs was always that I had some component of marketing in my job description. So I wrote newsletters, I wrote blogs, I wrote you know different things. And I was like, why don't I try doing this full time? So I created an Upwork profile. I really focused on getting clients that were in the events industry 
because I knew that I could write about that, even though I had literally zero professional writing experience, technically, like I didn't have a degree or certifications or anything like that. So that ended up really taking off. And that's sort of what I've been doing since. And then I used the copywriting business to sort of fund what I like to call my passion project and lifestyle business that I'm working on growing now, which is One Wonderful Life. And that's sort of a mix between travel blog and coaching business that's helping other women create these lifestyle businesses that allow them the time, location, and just general lifestyle freedom that a nine to five doesn't really give you. So it's a long-winded version, but... <laughs> love it. Yeah, no, love it and can so resonate with with wanting more freedom. For me, like the last job that I had before I... Well, before I quit my corporate career, because um, yeah. I didn't become an entrepreneur right away, but Okay. Um, I love that job and I was working, I was working in Hoboken, which from, from where I live now, it's like a little over an hour. It's like less than an hour and a half. And when you're young, it's such a fun place to work because you can go to lunch, go to cool places to eat. If you're familiar with Hoboken, you get it. I do love Hoboken. Yeah. Yeah. But then I got married, then I got pregnant. And then all of a sudden it's like, you know what? This, this commute is not really... Like this commute is taken away from time with my baby or it's exactly. going to take away. Yeah. So it, it just all of a sudden became like, even though I enjoyed my job and what I was doing mm-hmm. and, and all that, I was like, I, I just can't, I can't keep doing mm-hmm. this. Yeah. And at the time they wouldn't let me work from home. So um, I had to, I quit my job and mm-hmm. didn't have a backup. You know, it was just like, okay, well, I'm going to be a stay at home mom. I don't know what my future holds. <laughs> like I literally had mm-hmm. no idea what was what I was going to do. Um, but time free, like freedom to flexibility, I guess, like flexibility and yeah. time freedom. Those were things that I really was craving. Um, and then that led me to becoming a fitness coach, mm-hmm. which was a very lifestyle friendly business for me. Um, and I think also because it was one of those things like, well, I'm going to be doing this anyway. Like I'm going to be exercising and, you know, focusing on self-care anyway. So, Hey, I can help other women do it too. And, um, yeah, so it was, it's an, another reason why I'm going back to it and like reopening that business again, because it's just, um, I feel like I'm meant to be doing that and it's, it makes me happy and I want to do things that make me happy. (laughs) Um, Yeah. So let's talk a little bit more about like a freedom based business of like a, a, yeah business that allows you to live whatever lifestyle you want because i think for, totally. for different people that could be different things right but like for you tell us a little more about like you yeah kind of love the travel so share with us yes yeah, definitely <laughs> that's so again travel sort of like my main thing and i wanted i'm sort of unique in a way where i don't want to be a digital nomad like i have a house i have a mortgage i have a dog that's too big to fly on a plane like <laughs> i still very much have a home base yeah. So I want the flexibility to be able to take it with me, but not have to. Mm-hmm. And I think that's what makes me a little bit different than other online business owners who really just want the flexibility to be able to pop open their laptop wherever. Um, I really wanted to be able to log off completely when I go on these trips um, and really soak up the experiences that I was having there and be able to be in the moment without being on my phone or worrying about what's coming through my email. So for me, it was a mix of really figuring out what I wanted to offer and the type of client that I wanted to work with was somebody that would understand that essentially. So the way that I have my copywriting business set up, um, I tell my clients about a quarter, like every quarter I'll send out like my upcoming travel dates. And I typically don't do a ton of last minute trips um, unless the spirit moves me, but I typically like to plan a quarter in advance just so that they can have notice. And with that, I tell them that if I don't have things two weeks before I leave, it's not going to get done until after I get back. So it's a lot of boundaries, which took me a really long time (laughs) to figure out. Um, But setting up those structures, setting expectations really clearly. So like in my contracts, I'll have language around, you know, these are dates I'm not in the office for the duration of our project. Um, So they'll sort of understand that from the get-go. And... um, Yeah, I just setting up those boundaries and those processes and just really being adamant that there are like, there's no emergencies in marketing. That's something that everybody says, but you know, getting 
clients into that mindset is huge too. So I think a lot of my clients at this point are sort of like, yep, we know she's not going to be here like every couple months for like a week or so at a time. And actually the beginning of this year, I took a week off to travel internationally January, February, and March. And one of those trips was actually a little bit longer. And then I'm going again in July. So I've been able to structure my workflow and my projects to sort of fit around those trips rather than fitting my trips around my business, which I think has been the biggest reward for me as an entrepreneur. And it did took me a couple of years to get it to that point. But it's like, I don't know. The freedom is just everything that I imagined in terms of having the financial freedom because my business is actually supporting me. And then the time freedom is huge. And, you know, sometimes I will, especially with coaching clients, I'll still log on and like do boxer chats once in a while and things like that because that's a little bit different than copywriting. But with the copywriting business, it's very much that like when I am gone, I do not work. So that's, you know, it's been a work in progress, but it's so worth it to put in the effort to sort of figure out what that flow needs to look like so that you can log off, which I feel like is really hard to do as an entrepreneur. Yeah. Yeah. I think it can be really hard. Um, I have so many thoughts on my, on what you said. So one, I think it's great that you have like, you know, your, your contract, your onboarding. Cause I, I've been guilty of that too, where like, I almost feel bad putting things in my car or like in my contract yeah. or like in my, you know, welcome packet. That mm-hmm. says like, my thing is I don't work past 3 PM because yeah. you know, my, my son gets home yeah. and then like I'm home with my kids, but like, Clients can idea like they could box me or they could email me after that, but I just mm-hmm. won't respond until the next day, right? Exactly. Um, but I still feel like sometimes people don't pay attention to that. So, like one thing I've struggled with is like getting them to actually like read the details of like yes, what, <laughs> that I'm, is what fair. I'm telling yep. them. Um, but I think perhaps like one idea might be there to put it in different places, like put it in your welcome packet, put it in your like first initial emails, like yeah, contract. So that way they're kind of seeing it a few times and it's like, oh, okay. Like these are her, her office hours or these are, you know, her travel dates, you know? Um, I think just like everybody else, you know, we all get busy and sometimes like we get, we miss things. Exactly. Um, Another thing is like, I think it's so amazing. And for anyone who's, who's, you know, watching this or, or listening to this and you have a corporate job, I just want to say that I'm like, I don't think having a corporate job is bad. I think for some people it's, it's oh. great. It's, it's ideal. It's like what they're meant to do. Um, but personally too, like I just, I don't want to have two weeks every year to be able to travel. You know, that I was my motivating that factor. when I can. Yeah. And I definitely don't travel as much as Sarah does, but we, you know, we typically take at least one like big vacation and then a couple of trips th- throughout the year. And I think it's also like about thinking of like, okay, well, if there are things that need to get done while you're away, like, do you need a team member? Like who, like, mm-hmm. is there somebody who can help you keep the wheels going yeah. um, so that you can disconnect or at least like not be as like connected and you can actually enjoy your vacations and your trips and and all that. Um, yeah. For the coaching business, I definitely... Like I want a VA in my inbox kind of thing to answer people's requests a little bit more in a timely manner. Whereas the copywriting business, again, like there's just really no emergencies. There shouldn't be with the structures that we've set up. So I just make like a fun out of office. Like, oh, I'm in Morocco, like sipping on mint tea and shopping in the soup. Sorry, I'll be back on X date. Um, If you have any questions, like I will answer them as soon as I return. And I have been doing this for, you know, whenever the pandemic ended and we started traveling again, well, not ended, but, you know, um, I think the first trip we took was probably September, 2021. And since then, that's sort of like the format that I've had. And I have not had one client complain. And that is, I was surprised, honestly, (laughs) I figured people would lose their minds. But because of all of that pre-work and that like setting that foundation and those expectations up front and like having that open communication, that was just like huge and being able to set it up that way. Yeah. So for, for podcasting, like when, um, we work 
for people and we manage their podcasts and we write their show notes. What we typically like to do is to kind of be like a couple of episodes ahead. So that way, yeah. like if I'm traveling or even say the client is like sick or something and they can't record, like we have like another two weeks of content Absolutely. that we, like we have that in the bank so yep. that we're never like, we're never working like that same week. We're not working on that week's content, you know? Yeah. I mean? So it's, it's good to like set up your system so that you're kind of working ahead. Even for my own podcast, like we're recording now, but this podcast won't be live yeah. for another few weeks. And, you know, there's a bunch of other podcast episodes that I've already recorded. Mm-hmm. So if I need to like the summer, I'm not going to be record. Like I don't have any podcast interviews scheduled mm-hmm. for the summer. So I can focus on like the things that I really have to be doing exactly. only and have yeah. more time for the kids and, and, you know, trips and things like that. So it's amazing. Um, it's kind of just figuring out like, what are the things that you have to do? What are yes. the, like, the must have? Non-negotiables. <laughs> yeah. The non-negotiables. Exactly. So Let's talk about another different topic, which I find very impressive because I, I feel like I started my, I started my business offline. So the fitness coaching Mm -hmm. business was offline first, and then I went online and then I sort of never went back. I mean, I have like, I have like, you know, a couple of one-on-one clients that are in person now, but even thinking of like my podcasting business, I'm like, I don't know how I could grow that business not being Mm -hmm. online. And I know that you are not really like on social media for your business or at least for your copywriting business. So how, how do you do it? How do you make it work? Yeah. So for the copywriting business, the way that I really grew that in the beginning was through job boards, like Upwork, Fiverr. um, Honestly, like Indeed has a lot of really good contract work. And I think since the pandemic, especially, there's even more of that for people that are trying to get started without social. So really figuring out like where you can find gigs for your specific specialty. Like freelancing females is another really good one for people that are looking for freelancing jobs. So like these types of resources will have jobs for you to apply for rather than you having to go out and pitch. So essentially, I was going to the work rather than trying to bring the work to me. Ah, So that's like sort of the way that I approached it. And then with that, once I had sort of my foundation of clients that was like paying my bills monthly, then I got a little bit more creative with um, like a referral system. So like with the clients that you're already working with, they probably know other people in your space. So if they give you a referral, either send them a gift card or do a certain percentage of the contract value or something like that. Um, so creating that referral system and talking to your current clients who have had a really good experience with you, that is another way that I really was able to stay off, off of social media. Um, and then LinkedIn, just connecting with people that you haven't maybe connected with in a while that are in these different areas and industries that you're working in, um, reconnecting and having those conversations. And you never know what's going to come from that, essentially. Um, like There were a lot of event managers that I talked to that were, you know, within the event marketing world and needed content that they didn't have time to create themselves. So you never know, I guess, where a lead is going to come from. So just infuse it into conversations with people that you haven't really talked to in a while. Um, And then with growing coaching business, I am a little bit on social media, but honestly, like, I think I post once a quarter, (laughs) maybe a little bit more than that, but once a month, maybe. And I try and stay on stories, like maybe once a week, but I run ads, paid ads for that business to sort of get people into my email list. And then I use my email list to sell really, um, so that I'm not really having to show up on social media really ever because I hate it. But (laughs) I do like with the paid ads, you do have to show up at least a little bit because if people start to follow you from those ads, you want some sort of presence. But it's really been a mix of, you know, for the coaching business, paid ads, but for the copywriting business, job boards, LinkedIn, having a referral system with the clients that you get in the get from the get go, and then talking with those personal connections that you have in your own life. Um, And that's been huge for me. Even with the coaching business, two of my clients are people that I've known almost my entire life. And that just, you know, you don't have to build that no like trust that social media is there to build. So tapping into that network is huge. Yeah, that's great. I think that, you know, we're often told, you know, 
go to your network um, or grow your network, right? Like yeah. talk to the people that you have in front of you. Um, but I like the the fact or I like the um the the tip of going or using like the the job sites. Cause mm-hmm. I think that we forget or I think we sometimes we think like, oh, that's like for people who like are beginners or yeah. You know, they charge really low, but I think, and actually I, I read this in somebody's email. I'm forgetting who it is that I follow, but I think she's also a copywriter. And she was saying how she went through this just funk. Like she was kind of like reorganizing things in her business. And Mm -hmm. she was like, you know, getting rid of a certain offer that she offered. And she was like, okay, but I still need like some new clients coming in. So she went Mm -hmm. to like, she went to, I forget which one, I think she may have got, even gone to like Upwork and just found a couple yeah. of clients and like, yeah. you know, so it, it it can even serve to like, just kind of like bring in some, some exactly. income, you know, while yeah. you're like figuring things out. So yeah, be for like a brand new business owner. Um, no, not yeah, at all. These are great, great tips. And yeah, and the, and the email list, right? Like running ads yeah. to your email list. I haven't done ads in a while. <laughs> so I'm a little, I'm a little nervous there. But um, <laughs> I do totally get the value of like, you know, nurturing an email list and, and selling to them. Um, yeah. yeah, I think as a writer, that just feels very natural to me. Because, you know, I spend all day writing for clients and it's actually like 10 times easier to write like my own stories in those nurturing emails for the coaching business. Um, so that is actually like really fun for me and almost a creative outlet. So I sort of decided that like once that felt fun, I was going to stop trying to be on social media and like grow that way because everybody tells you that you have to do it that way. And I think while you might like it's good to have a presence for certain kinds of businesses, it's not always necessary. Um, and I think that's not talked about enough. Exactly. I agree with you. I think for the like fitness industry, mm-hmm. you know, I hear so much of like, oh, you have to be on TikTok and you have to do reels oh, every yeah. day. And I just, I'm not, I think I'm, I'm creative, but I'm not that yeah. creative. And no, you know, it's trying so to figure out, it's time consuming. I'm like, I don't want to, I'd rather like, I'd rather write more emails, you know, or rather exactly. like, That's a how podcast I episode. <laughs> yeah. So I, yeah, I mean, I like, I'll do things, but yeah, I'm, I'm a very basic Instagrammer. Same. <laughs> so Same. I'm like, whatever. Pe- my people resonate with my basic. Exactly. That's what, <laughs> yep. A hundred percent. And I think that yeah. that's like, that's the beauty of all lifestyle business. Like you're not set in any specific way of doing things. Like the way you want to do things is really what feels good to you. And that's sort of been my guiding principle is what feels good to me right now. And I don't want to be forcing what I'm doing every day because that's why I became an entrepreneur to begin with was to not have to do these things that I dislike every single day. And you know, in business and life, there's always going to be things you don't like. But if you really have like a strong resistance to something, there are ways around it always. That's sort of what I've found. Yes, that's that's a great insight there. I think we can all kind of think about what that might mean for us and how maybe we've been made to believe that we have to do these things or we have to do them a certain way. Mm-hmm. Um, but it's things are going to flow much better when we're truly aligned and doing things that we actually exactly. enjoy. So I totally agree with that. that, Sarah. Yeah. So if anyone wants to learn more about you, they want to follow you, see what you're up to, where should they go? What's the best yeah. place? So best place is to subscribe for, to my email list because I'm not on social very much, but <laughs> you can do that through the bio on my Instagram, which is just one wonderful, W-A-N-D-E-R-F-U-L, um, life and then an underscore on Instagram. So that's the only social platform I'm on. And then onewonderfullife.com is my website where I have a blog that's about entrepreneurship, starting a lifestyle business, and then also travel, of course. <laughs> yes, and she gets she travels to really cool, beautiful places. So check it out, <laughs> even if you want to see where she's going next. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Thank you so much, Sarah, for, for joining me Thank today. Thank you. And, this um, was fun. Yes, it was fun. Thank you. Have a great day. And thank you guys for listening. Thank you for listening to the Elevated Femmes Movement. I would love to hear your thoughts on the podcast. So please leave us a review. If you know someone who could benefit from the episodes on the show, please share it with them. We need more women elevating to their highest potential, enjoying all the great things in life, having plenty of time freedom for their children and loved ones, 
while doing things smarter and not harder and growing a business that improves, not consumes their life. To connect with me and download my free resources, please go to www.juliamhickman.com.